Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Mooks, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at uh, separations for our design class based on the textbook by Turton. And in particular, we're going to look at what to do with an azeotrope. So azeotropes really complicate our distillation processes. Uh, typically, you're going to, you know, start looking for them if you have mixtures of oxygenated organic compounds. So these are your, your alcohols, your ketones, your ethers, your acids, and your water. Um, so there will be distillation boundaries that limit how high a concentration you can get of a certain species. And so we need to be aware of that and then know how to deal with modeling that and separating that. So the basic idea is to do a material balance, whether you're mixing things together or separating things, is the lever rule. And the concept here, if you have the compositions at points I and K, uh, or you have a mixture at M and you're trying to get to I and K, then the lever rule is a way of writing a mass balance fairly efficiently. We use this when we're doing binary vapor-liquid equilibrium. And in an ideal mixture at equilibrium, what we can say is that the fugacity in the liquid and the vapor will be the same. And those expressions are given here, so for the vapor phase and the gas phase. But what we know is that for the gas phase, we expect the fugacity coefficient to be 1 if it's fairly ideal. And for the liquid, we expect the activity coefficient to be 1 for an ideal liquid mixture. And so that simplifies to this form. And we can do the same thing for the other component in a binary mixture. And if you add those up, you end up with the total pressure. And real mixtures actually do behave nearly ideally. So Benzene toluene is one of those nearly ideal solutions. And the PXY and XY diagram for benzene and toluene are shown on the screen at 90 degrees C. But if you have a homogeneous azeotrope, so there's a homogeneous and a heterogeneous azeotrope. What most people think of as an azeotrope is the homogeneous azeotrope. And in this case, Although we can still say that the fugacity coefficient for the vapor is 1, the activity coefficient for the liquid will not be 1. And so we end up with a more complex expression as shown here. Now, when you graph these, you'll get diagrams that are something like these. So the PXY diagram, instead of forming a nice big bubble, forms two bubbles that are pinched together in the middle somewhere. And the xy diagram is going to cross the y equal x line. This is an example of um, let's see, oh, isopropyl ether and isopropyl alcohol that form an azeotrope. And this is acetone and chloroform that forms a high boiling azeotrope. Now, the way that we often describe these is using residue curves. Now, a residue curve officially is created by taking material and putting it in a distillation still and doing a batch distillation on that. So if you do a material balance on this, you've got liquid in there, and then you have delta liquid that's leaving, moving into the vapor, and the compositions change. And so when you do the material balance on these for each of your components, and some, you end up with an expression that looks like this, which then can be written in this form here. Okay, so how x changes over the course of the distillation time is the difference between the x and the y. For a normal system, non-azeotropic, or it was to be called zeotropic system, we have the residue curve shown here on the left. But when you have an azeotrope, what happens is that you actually move from the corner, you move up to another point here that these various lines all go from a random point, it feels like here, over to this other stable node. So 
this is a symptom of what you're going to see when you have these azeotropic systems here. And this saddle over here is a point that can never be achieved. The unstable node is going to be something that you can get to, but it can't get past, and it's unstable. It wants to move towards this. Okay, so there's your stable node, your unstable node, and your saddle all highlighted. Now you can do this same concept using a continuous still, shown here, and do it over with a balance over just a few of the trays at the top, and we end up with essentially the same thing. It's just that it's change with position instead of change with time. Now you can sketch these residue curves like what we looked at earlier by hand using these balances or using an experimental data set, but we can also use Aspen to do these for us. And so once you've entered your components and your property package, then you can go to the tools menu and do the analysis and then it's a property analysis and you want the residue property. The default is going to be vapor liquid, but you can also do liquid liquid vapor residue curves. And you'll want to do this for the various combinations of your chemicals and make sure that there is no azeotrope present. Now you have to be aware that the presence of an azeotrope being matching reality is only as good as the property package that you've put in. So if you know there's an azeotrope and it doesn't show up when you do these residue curves, then you know that you've done a very poor job of selecting a model. Um, the directions of the curve is in the direction of increasing the temperature. And what I am recommending is that sort of for homework, go try the system water methanol and methyl acetate at one atmosphere. It depends on your model. If you use the Wilson model, it's not going to predict a liquid-liquid region, but the UNIFAC does, and in fact it should. Um, so a residue curve, in addition to identifying what the azeotrope is and where it is, it's also a way of identifying if our property package is any good. And these are some examples of residue curve maps. Okay, for various tritangary systems, okay, three components, A, B, and C. And they can, as you see here, there's lots of different ways that these graphs can work. But the key thing is we want to know whether or not a separation is going to be possible. And so the trick is that what we want to do is plot our points, our bottoms and our distillate product, what we are expecting, plot those on the curve here. And we need it for any one of these lines, we need it to cross that particular residue curve two times. So it's not crossing two of the residence curves. This is not stable. It's crossing each curve only one time, so this would not be a possible separation. But this one across from here to here is possible. Similarly, in this diagram, each of our residue curves shown here, from going from here to here, crosses one of those residue curves only a single time. But this one, coming down into the corner here, is feasible because it crosses this particular residue curve two times. So that concludes this video lesson. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. How are we going to break that azeotrope? Okay, there are several ways you can do this. So one thing is you can add a component that will actually break the azeotrope. Uh, it's an intermediate boiling entrainer. You want it to have a boiling point that's between the two things you're trying to separate. And if you choose well, you can actually get these then to go past your azeotrope and then separate out the entrainer in a secondary step. Another possibility is pressure swing distillation. And in this one, it depends on how the location of the azeotrope changes with pressure. If it's significant, then you can do one at uh, the lower pressure in this case, 
do that separation first and then take this product which is now the feed to the second one and you can distill over here you could then bring this back over to the other one and separate out to get a pure product okay so pressure swing if you have a big enough difference in the location of the azeotrope with change in pressure this can work very well um, tetrahydrofuran THF and water is a system that can work very well so notice that the azeotropes are located you know fairly far apart and once you get past the azeotrope it's nice and big and wide so distillation is very simple to do okay so this really concludes this video lesson on azeotropic distillation and ways you might consider uh, dealing with that thank you very much for your time